Hey friends, how you doing? It is zero days to expiration, and this is episode number 10 of season two. And it is Tuesday, January 17th. This is the final hour of the market. Today, I didn't put on a trade because, well, let me let me tell you a little bit about um, uh, premium collection and, and putting on butterflies. Now, the butterfly, which is our primary trade of choice, is what one would term uh, benefiting in a vega negative environment. What that means is that when uh, volatility is dropping, the butterfly benefits. But that's assuming that you are actually in the butterfly. So you already have established a position. You're sitting in there in the profit tent, and volatility is dropping down. And that volatility dropping is causing the premium to decay. And because you're inside the butterfly, that decaying premium uh, is benefiting you. However, if you're trying to get into the butterfly and vega is negative or volatility is dropping, it's very difficult to get a good price on that fly because, well, with volatility dropping, premium and the cost of those spreads is getting more expensive. So getting the kind of risk to reward that you want uh, becomes a challenge. Sometimes so, so much so that it's just not worth doing it. So you don't. And that is exactly the situation this morning. So this morning, volatility was dropping. And I guess, uh, you know, for a brief moment, it, it was also rising. But then now it's dropping some more. But that was only a very brief moment. But by that time, it was it was too late anyway, so no trade today. However, I had the brilliant idea of potentially putting on... Now, let, let, me, let me explain. In a zero DT environment, what are the nuances to this? If you want to put a trade on in the morning, volatility rising is the ideal situation. And in most cases, in a market... The morning time is a good time to put on such a trade because volatility is typically higher in the morning in the market. And then it starts to wane in the afternoon hours. And then as you get to the final hour, like right now, it starts to go up again. But here's the caveat. When when you read a a book on butterflies and it's telling you that it's volatility or vega negative, meaning that it benefits from being in it while volatility is coming down. They're, spe they're usually speaking in the context of maybe a, a monthly option that you're in and, you know, maybe you're 30 or 40 days out. Um, on, a, on a zero DTE day, after you get beyond the afternoon, noontime, it doesn't matter if volatility is going up or going down because time is the overriding factor. You only have another couple of hours left in the market. And so whether volatility is going up or going down, it doesn't matter. But in the beginning part of the day, it does. So what I'm going to propose is that we look at taking a trade in this final hour and um, we're going to use a rather unique technique. I think somebody called it the Stegosaurus pattern. <laughs> Not the Batman, uh, but the Stegosaurus. And um, we'll see if we can put that on. But it's similar to the Batman, but you put on two really narrow flies, or maybe even three. <clears throat> and, um, you know, give that a go. Let's see here. I need to open up the comment window. See who have we who we have on a new splash well it's not really a new splash screen i've i've been uh, i've been testing it out for the past few episodes last episode i wasn't last couple of episodes i wasn't able to do it because i had to be over there in the billiard parlor because um the studio here was being uh fixed um oh see i'm not I'm showing some uh 
Everything's um, disheveled back there. All right. Pay no attention to the back wall. <laughs> we have Bob back there. He's looking for a good beating. I'm normally standing up, but taking it easy today. So we're going to look into a um, what is called... I, I Stegosaurus is not a good name for it. It's just not a good name. We'll call it something else, but uh, let me see if this is even in play. How about Tesla today? Man, that looks great. Tesla is blowing it. You know, for all those naysayers out there about Tesla that want to compare it to just another auto company, like Nobel laureate Paul Krugman, the smartest dumbass on the face of the planet. I've never met, well, I, I have never met Paul Krugman, but let me, let me tell you this. I've, I, I don't understand how that person, that man, became a Nobel laureate. He, he's consistently wrong. Consistently. Maybe he was right when, I don't know, for whatever he did for the Nobel Prize, that's all one thing. But man, I have not seen a single interview with him, a single bit of analysis in the past 20 years where he's made any sense whatsoever. And he was talking about Tesla trying to chide in as if he was some sort of expert. He's supposed to be an economic expert, but he don't know shit about Tesla. <laughs> calling it just another auto company. Uh, anyways, Tesla is just off the hook. Off the hook. Today it is up. How much is it up today? Let's see. I'll tell you in a second. Let's take a look at Tesla. So this is a daily chart of Tesla. This, um, this line that I have drawn here, and uh, down below I have a linear regression slope oscillator. And what I'm showing here really is that there's a huge divergence. So here we have an upslope in the linear regression slope oscillator. And then in price we have a massive downslope. And so what this is really showing, and you can actually see there was also another um, here, but th this, is, this is very clear. This is trending up a little bit, and this is trending down super strong. That's a positive divergence. And then since then, Tesla's been taking off, and now it's gapped up, and it's up big. Let's see. How much is it up today? It is up um, almost 7% today. So I think that we're going to see Tesla testing this 200 area right around here, 196 very soon. It's going to take a little bit. It's got some, uh, you know, a lot of stair-stepping to do here. But I think that's where we're going to see it, you know, testing a breakout at this level right here. Fact is that uh, Tesla, I know that this is, this really doesn't have anything to do with zero DTE, but you know, you got to talk about the stories of our times now, and and you know between SpaceX and Tesla and their prowess in terms of manufacturing and the the moves that they pulled in basically in defiance of the U.S. government trying to snub them with their uh, tax relief, their IRA tax relief thing. Basically, they uh, made sure that Tesla's cars were in a, in a category that made them, um, I guess, you know, not, not available for the tax break, the $7,500 tax break. So as a testament to the pricing power that Tesla has and the enormous amount of margin that they have, they cut their prices 
drastically. So it brought them down to the next level. So they no longer had to be considered an SUV. They could be... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. They could be uh, considered in a different class, and now they're now they um, now they're qualified for the tax break. So not only did Elon Musk drop the price on Teslas, like on the Model Y, I think ten thousand or thirteen thousand dollars. On top of that, you get the seventy five hundred ta tax break, seventy five hundred dollar tax break. Now the U.S. government they hate Tesla. I should say that this administration hates Tesla and they want to punish him and they want to prop up uh, their favorite government controlled. Uh, the dogs are going nuts. Uh, government controlled uh, auto company like GM and Ford. Well, not so much Ford, but definitely GM. And they thought that by putting the screws to Tesla, uh, they would be propping up the others. But the others are, are totally inept. They are just skating by with super thin margins. They can't compete with Tesla in terms of um, production or technology. Tesla's cars are by far the safest in the world. Highest safety ratings ever recorded, ever, on all their cars. And, uh, and, and they're just killing it. And so now Elon Musk has basically pulled a 4D chess move and not only got around that IRA tax benefit, IRA, I don't remember what it stands for, but it does. it's not about retirement account. It's something else. It stands for something else. Anyways, they, uh, they got around that because they have pricing power and because they had enormous margins, they were able to cut their prices, which is going to spur just that price cut alone. It's going to spur demand. But now they're eligible for that $7,500 tax credit on top of that. So in effect, the Model Y now has come down about $20,000. Wow. Imagine how much, how many more people that are now in the market for Tesla because it's $20,000 $20, cheaper. Yep. Now that's a company to watch. And that's a company that is going places. And recently with their their tests on at, at SpaceX with their new uh, what what is the name of that rocket that uh, that big giant thing? They tested that and it was flawless. Their ability to put satellites up in the air. Man, what is going on up there? <laughs> Must be somebody delivering something to the house. Yeah, it's called Starship. That's it. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, they they are just totally. They just are totally off the hook. Uh, this past year, I think uh, they produced. I don't know. Was it uh, 1.3 or 1.5 million? I don't know. Whatever it was, I think they're going to do over 2 million this year. I think it was 1.7 total. Yeah, uh, they did a they did a test run on the Starship, and they wanted to test it out, you know, to make sure that the um, I guess the the base that gets them off the ground initially was all, all good. Now, one thing that Tesla does that NASA can't do is that they can reuse their booster rockets. That's crazy. And they've done something like, I don't know, 140 missions now where they've uh, reused these booster rockets. Some of them are, you know, going on 15, 16 rounds where at NASA, they put something up, it's disposable. And it costs them a lot more. Tesla has got it going on. Now, besides that, the, the unspoken story about Tesla is their Tesla Power part of their company. It's not Tesla Solar. This is Tesla Power. And the, uh, the margins that they're showing on there and the profit that they're making and the rate at which they're expanding is going to – I think it's going to eclipse their car company. Look out for metal stress. Uh-oh, Craig's a denier. <laughs> so um, 
Yeah, I, I think they've got it figured out. I, I trust Tesla more than I trust NASA, to tell you the truth. The other thing about Tesla, it used to be, you know, there were certain companies that talent would seek out to go work for. Tesla is that company now. It used to be the Apples and Microsoft and Netflix and Amazon and all those. Twitter, they, they don't want to work for them anymore. Well, Twitter, maybe now, sure. They want to work for Tesla because that's where things are happening. Tesla is run like, a bunch of tiny little startups. And well, actually all of the Musk companies are, are run that way. That type of operation, that type of philosophy, the agile mentality is going to bring them far. They, they are so far ahead of everybody else right now, there's just no way to catch up. And now with this new pricing, they have just, they've essentially blown away the competition and put a decade be, between them all. And so that's why, even though they cut prices massively last over the weekend or Friday, whatever, whenever it was, that's why Tesla is still going up. No one is really worried about margin concerns because they have none. They have that kind of pricing power. They are consistently lowering prices on their, on their cars, and they're going to keep on doing that. Soon they're going to have... The Cybertruck that's going to come out, uh, that'll they'll probably produce maybe forty or fifty thousand of those this year, and now their I think their Model Three is is priced in the mid thirties or low thirties. They'll come out with a sub thirty thousand dollar vehicle soon. Then it's game over. So if you're not invested in Tesla, this is the time to do it. Look where it is. Look where it is. I bought a whole bunch way down at the bottom, and I've been buying it all the way up. That, that thing is going to hit new highs. New highs. Absolutely. Really a Marvel company. Anyways, this is all about zero DTE, isn't it? But, you know, you have to point it out. You have to follow companies like this when they're on the precipice. And Tesla's already done fantastic things, but... They're, they're going to new heights despite all of the friction with the government and everybody else and the idiot Nobel laureates that don't realize that Tesla is not just a car company. They are a technology company. They are a power company. They are an AI company. They are so much more than just an auto company. They are uh, at the cutting edge of manufacturing. Nobody can touch them and they've got the safest cars in the world. I mean, man, if you had kids, why would you put them in any other car? Right? I, I know that we all measure our risks and uh, the amount that we can afford. But now there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting a Tesla uh, to put your children into it. Did you see that, that story about that family that ran off of a cliff? Apparently, there was a, there's a backstory to that, which is really unbelievable. But they were in a Tesla, ran off of a cliff, 250 feet down, came crashing down. Everyone survived without really any injuries because they were in a Tesla. That, was, that would be certain death in any other car. Apparently, uh, the, the father of that car was arrested for attempted murder. <laughs> you just can't make shit like this up. Unbelievable. So anyways, um, back to zero DTE, but we're going to keep an eye on Tesla. We're also keeping an eye on gold. Uh, you know, as you know, I've been saying buy gold ever since November. Well, here's November down here, all right? And here's gold up here. Gold's going to hit new highs. And I suspect that this is going to continue because right now, a lot of foreign, the foreign powers, there's going to be some big changes coming in the world very soon. Foreign powers are, well, somebody, we just don't know who, somebody is buying a lot of gold right now and driving that price up. I suspect that this same somebody already has a lot of gold, a lot more gold than the U.S. has. And the U.S., man, it, it's amazing 
that in one administration, they can take a vibrant c- country and basically turn it to shit. And that's what's happening. We are, we are going to see the demise of our country. We're going to lose the, um, the status of the reserve dollar. Um, we're going to lose a lot of things. Because we're taking our eye off the ball and following all this woke shit. I don't know if that will um, that will affect my my YouTube uh, monetization. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Um, but anyways, you know, and and who wants to who wants to cheer on China and Russia? But they are going to eat our lunch. You know, China, Russia, uh, India. They're all colluding now. They're all going, and Saudi Arabia. Yep. It's not going to be good. Milo says, no secret that the BRICS countries are the future. And they didn't have, it didn't have to be that way, Milo. It really didn't. We, we had, we were in prime condition to compete, but apparently we don't want to compete. I guess that's <laughs> it's the way it is. But at least we have Tesla, right? At least we have Tesla and SpaceX. And we're all going to Mars. I can't wait to go to Mars. No, I'm not going to Mars. That's a one-way trip. All right. Uh, let's see. Do we have an opportunity going into the close here? So it's 3.30. I really thought that we were going to have um, sort of a, a move up here, but we're not. It doesn't look like we're, we're moving up into the close. Let's see where Tesla is going. Let's uh, zoom in on that. Look at that. Tesla just keeps on... And man, that's a pattern that's going to break up. Oh, holy crap. I'm so glad that I bought all those shares. All right. Now, what I was going to suggest is that we put on some butterflies. Now, we have the LVL here sitting at, what is this level right here? 40.09. And that represents pretty good support. I would think that uh, putting a, a very narrow fly under the market and maybe one above the market, maybe just down under the market right now, because now it's starting to look kind of weak. It looks like, you know, we made this uh, this shot for the uh, volume well up here where the liquidity was low and we could not push through. And this now this is starting to look bearish to me, this kind of continuation and now rolling over this time of the day oh that's sad yeah that's not looking good i'm thinking we put a um, fly right here what is that something like that No, a really narrow fly right about here. Maybe five wide. Ten. Yeah, it'd be like that. Hmm. We could do a, a Batman and put one on either side. I don't know. Let's see how that will work out. Something like that. I really think that the, the bearish one is going to work out better. Hmm. 
don't know. Let's see, I wonder if I can open up Think or swim. Go back to the big head, give it a talk. <clears throat> see. I have Think or Swim open on another computer here. Let's see what we can do. So if we put on a fly at 4,000, what does that give us for a risk to reward? No, I don't want that. What are you doing, Ernie? We want SPX. How come Think of Swim never opened up over here? Clicked on it, never opened up. Alright. Alright, there it is. Let's see if we can get it going here. This is the ultimate in preparedness, huh? Well, there was no trade going on today, so everything that we do is going to be off the cuff. Wow. Pricing on this is crazy. If we go to 80, hmm. So if you center something at 3980 and uh, make it Five wide. It'll cost you fifteen cents. Do we have a shot? See now the see now the market's starting to move up. I you know I'm of the uh, I'm of the feeling that there really is no play today. We had that quick move up, came down, and then we've just been blah, 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 just doing nothing. That's a technical term. Blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, I see no future in wasting our money. I can't even see putting on a Batman trade. It just doesn't look, just doesn't look good. Maybe what we can do is. No, I don't even want to do that. Some days you just have to uh, write it off, right? What is um, what does volatility look like? Yeah. See, we temporarily went up and then came down. So volatility is under 20 now. And soon we may be outside of the Goldilocks zone. You may be wondering what's the Goldilocks zone. Now, it's it's not so important what the level of volatility is, although it's somewhat important. It's more the direction that it's going in and what's the relative level of when you get into the trade versus when you are trying to get out.
So for example, if I were to, oh, I'm just going to quit out of Think of Swim. It's not doing anything here. Not doing me any good. So let's go over to the charts again. And so this is, this is uh, the VIX down way down here over here in the lower left that's life sucking volatility and anything below 17 we consider zombie land and anything above 34 that's operation chaos and um, these three zone the zone back here is what i call the goldilocks zone so while you're in here this is probably the ideal place to be for doing premium collection on zero dte between 17 and 34. It's okay going up, you know, it's, you still have opportunity. And going down is a little bit more difficult. You have to be much more choosy. Uh, I think Batman's go out of fa favor once we get down below 17. That's why I call it the line of demarcation. So no Batman's below there probably, just directional trades, mostly up. Yeah, that's correct, Robro. We do not force a trade. If there's no trade, look, you have to have you have to have reverence for your money. Keep in mind that the money that you have, the money that you put to work here, that represents the value that you have put into the market, unless you stole the money. Or, you know, like ripped it off your mom's pocketbook or something. Other than that, if you work for the money, then that represents your labor, your intellectual capital, depending on where you work. It represents you. And so if you're going to put it to work, then, then you have to take into consideration that that is you that you are putting to work. You know, not directly. It is that's. It's the extension of you. You should have reverence for that money, right? So only put it to work on places where you think that you can have a fair chance. If you don't have a fair chance, then, then don't do it. Hold on to it. Cherish, revere that money. Because like I said, it is you. All right. There is... Little to do here. So, I am going to wrap it up. I, You know, I, I don't see any point in uh, wasting our time here. So, tomorrow we'll come back. Let's see, get the big head on here. Tomorrow we'll have a, a fun pack show. I will have... Um, Part of our zero DTE course to go over with you. If you're interested in learning how to become a professional trader, becoming a an independent, consistently profitable trader, go down to the link below and zero dte.com slash try. Give it a four week try and see what we're all about. I know that uh, a lot of you, you know, you've been searching for a long time. Jumping from service to service, from strategy to dress, strategy, or from indicator to indicator. Wondering, you know, are you finally going to find the thing that will make you riches? Well, first of all, let me tell you, if you're doing that, you're going about it all the wrong way. Because trying all these different things, you're never giving yourself a chance to actually settle into a process that actually works. And that's what we do here will get you into a process that actually works. Show you a strategy and a methodology that's simple. However, it's nuanced. It's like one of those things. You can get into it, understand it very quickly, start implementing it, but then it takes a lifetime to master. Just the way every everything good in life should be. We'll teach you how to develop that process. We'll coach you. We'll mentor you. We'll keep you accountable to it. And after some period of time, You'll be able to look back and say, wow, I did that. I did that. I am now consistently profitable. 
I know how to go out there and and you'll own your own IP. You'll own your own intellectual capital and property. Your trading method will be yours. It won't be mine that I gave to you because we teach people, like I said, to be independent, professional, consistently profitable traders. That's what you will be. And volatility continues to drop. So that means the market is moving up. No, well, kind of. We're, we're just stuck right in the middle. Tesla's moving up. Ooh, Tesla's going to break out. Tesla's going to break out. Look, if you're out there, give this uh, video a thumbs up. We've got um, a lot of great things coming down the pipe or the pike. And we'll get into our strategy. We'll get into the methodology. Tomorrow we'll talk about, um, let's see, let's talk about asymmetry tomorrow. And uh, then later this week, we'll talk about some of the nuances of the strategy. We'll look at the, the differences uh, between the butterfly and then the classical strategy and which is best to deploy in what type of market. So if we're going into a low volatility market and we're going to start, I don't know, maybe this is the beginning of a rally. Who knows? If it is, then we're going to want to employ a different type of strategy. Not different from our point of view, but the right strategy uh, for that type of market. But that volatility dropping is going to impact the way you trade dramatically. Will an iron condor work for you? No friggin' way. An iron condor at the money with five or seven delta spreads is not going to work for you. That's a losing proposition. Come over to this side. We'll teach you how to become an asymmetric trader, looking for asymmetric returns, tiny, tiny risk, low drawdowns, big potential returns, and then do that consistently. And then learn a process for improving yourself every cycle that you go through. That's what it's about. Give it a thumbs up. Oh, uh, give it to Bitcoin Bob. <laughs> uh what happened to the uh the video did the video just go off what's going on with that yeah the video just went off all right well the video's back Hold on here. I have to uh, set up Bob. No, it's not a dead battery. It just uh, went off kind of randomly. All right. Hold on. I have to um, raise, raise the desk a little bit. You can see Bob. All right, Bob's in view. Hold on. All right, Bob. How you doing? Is Bob. Bitcoin, Bob. Now, I know Bitcoin's been on a run. But we've got to knock it down. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> All right. That was just a glancing blow. We'll have to give him a good one here. There we go. I took my eye off Bob. <laughs> uh. 
All right. So uh, that's it for today. I want to thank you very much for uh, for showing up. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, that des definitely deserves a thumbs up. Come on, give it up. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have a trade on and we'll talk about the strategy. Take care. Peace to you all. Have a good one. And now time for the music.